And to Newswatch, well, the budget last night, I tell you what, they sure looked after their mates again. You know, the Treasurer boasted being so tough, cutting here, cutting there. The Agriculture Department, for instance, that actually gets as much as the ABC each year, about a billion dollars, just over. But in this budget, the Agriculture Department was cut, but the ABC got more money every single year for the next four years. How does that work? Joining me is Sophie Ellsworth, media writer of the Australian newspaper. Sophie, more money for the ABC. Uh, how did that happen when almost every other media outlet in the country has to do more with less? Well, Andrew, over at the ABC, they definitely don't know what it's like to uh, run a commercial media outlet because they get tipped, as you said, a billion dollars a year by taxpayers, and now they'll be getting an extra $87 million over the next four years now that the Labor government is reinstalling indexation each year. Now, I think a lot of people will be asking, Andrew, where is this money going exactly once it hits the... Uh, you know, insides of the ABC, what will they be spending this money on? And in a story earl earlier this week, I pointed out that the ABC now has its highest staff numbers at over 4,500, uh, which is the highest level in uh, four or five years. So they're getting more staff over there. They're getting more money. Uh, at times, as you said at the top of the show, when people are really struggling, uh, Australians are feeling the pinch, but not at the ABC. Four and a half thousand staff and not a single one of them managed to spot and say that George Pell was innocent. How would you figure that? Unbelievable. Um, Meghan Markle's media career has uh, settled into a pattern. Uh, the wife of Prince Harry, Sophie, she's put out another one of those uh, Spotify interview series, you know, with other women, almost all of them with uh, always, uh, of colour. And uh, she's always playing the victim and almost always playing the race card too. This time she defended herself from a supposed stereotype she is. This idea that a black woman must be angry, an angry black woman, where does this idea even come from? Why has it been attributed to black women? And how do some black women cower from it, lean into it, or sometimes even play into it? What did you make of that? Well, this podcast was uh, a new low for Megan Markle, Andrew. She talked about how she was given this book uh, at a night. She went out for dinner. M might I point out it was a socially distanced dinner during COVID. And uh, she was handed this book that pointed out when you type in uh, why are black w women angry, it comes up in Google search engines. And she was saying this is such a shocking thing. So she was in bed with Prince Harry, nudging him, going, oh, my gosh, when you type these words in, the autofill comes up in Google with these stereotypes. So this is what her and Harry talk about in bed. Uh, goodness gracious me. But, again, she's playing the victim card, Andrew. She does this every week. I thought maybe it'll be a bit more lighthearted this week, but no, 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 she plays that race card. She also pointed out that she's 43% Nigerian. So, uh, again, this is her tactic. Let's either bag the royals or divide everyone by race. That's her modus operandi.